If you had to skin the flesh of innocent victims in order to stay beautiful, what would you do? This lovely girl will risk killing everyone she loves just to have a shot at becoming a pretty girl. I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat the flesh potion in beauty water. This girl has no idea what horrors she's about to go through willingly in order to become beautiful. Yeiji here is your very below average looking girl working in the entertainment industry, and she dreams of looking like the Korean superstars that she works for. One day at work, she talks with her co-workers about a secret potion all the celebrities are using in order to stay beautiful. This guy says that it's real, but Yeji thinks that this beauty water is just another celebrity rumor. But she doesn't realize that she's about to make a deal with the devil in order to get it. Suddenly, this pop star redhead lady comes in for her makeup, I hate her. She's rude as hell to all the work staff, and she tells Yeji to stop being so ugly. Just then, the manager brings and this pretty boy actor. He greets everyone and is very kind to Yeji. But then all of a sudden, he notices her beautiful eyes. He's telling this to Yeji when suddenly Redhead Lady gets mad and tells her to leave, throwing various hair products at her. Later, as Redhead Lady and Pretty Boy are filming this commercial, this assistant tells Yeji that she can fill in for a role. She then goes back and is told to eat all of this food while the commercial gets filmed. And that was her biggest mistake. Later that night, she discovers people online making fun of her in that video. Someone took a screenshot of her in the commercial, and now her ugly picture has gone viral. Horrified, she loses her shit, but suddenly she gets a text from a mysterious number saying that she's won a prize and that it's about to be delivered to her apartment. Minutes later, she gets a knock at her door and receives the package. She opens it up and discovers bottles of beauty water, along with video instructions on how to use the product, and is shocked to her very bone at what she sees. However, she's desperate to be beautiful. She tries on the beauty water and then walks out to show her family her new face. Shocked at the results, she finds the address of the beauty water store and runs there immediately. At the store, she meets this mysterious blonde lady who says that Yeji would be the perfect spokes lady for the beauty brand if she can pay them $200,000 so they can help her transform her entire body into becoming a pretty girl. Okay, no, 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 no. This is so bad. Yeji here is about to make a deal and sign her life away literally by acting without giving her actions any thought. Because when something sounds too good to be true, it usually is. And the fact that this product relies on harvesting flesh and placing it onto the body in combination with beauty, this makes this one product something that could severely fudge up Yeji's life so quick if she isn't careful. What they are asking of Yeji is to basically use her body and her face to promote a product that she's using and is invested in. Which sounds a little like an MLM company. MLM stands for multi level marketing and is a sales strategy which the people working for a company are financially incentivized to recruit and sell products to additional salespeople, who then join on board and try to sell and recruit more people to the company, getting a commission each time they recruit someone. However, what blonde lady is offering seems to differ slightly, as she's not asking Yeji to hire more people, only to provide advertising for the beauty water product, using her new beauty water looks to market the product, sort of like how companies pay smaller Instagram models to wear clothes so they can market for the company, rather than having the company market their product with cash. Except here's the difference is that Yeji will need to pay them $200,000 up front first. From what we know about this place and how it looks, it's likely that Blonde Lady here is a big distributor of the Beauty Water product, and in fact used aggressive, almost dare I say illegal, targeted advertising to find a desperate Yeji and offer her a free sample, hooking her for life on the product due to the fact that she's super insecure about her appearance. Because if we remember, the package that she got sent already knew her address in the first place. This means that Blonde Lady is preying on Yeji's current circumstances to make a sale and already knew that Yeji would be willing to pay her a visit and be willing to pay a price of $200,000. It's likely that Blonde Lady will make most of that in profit, since the price for Beauty Water has likely skyrocketed way up into the stratosphere. Also, it doesn't make sense that this shady company would not want to advertise a product like this to the general Korean public, because the amount of money that they could make would be staggering, especially when we know for a fact, thanks to things like social media, that a lot of people nowadays are deeply insecure about their looks. And because of this, I think the reason this company is acting all shady is because this product has not been FDA approved, or the Korean equivalent, which is the KFDA. If Yeji's willing to get out of her stupid little brain, she should cut her losses, get on a diet, and go to the gym. Because investing in a company that you know little to nothing about is one quick 
way to ruin your life. Desperate to be beautiful, Yeji bullies her family into coughing up the 200 grand, and later, she returns to Blonde Lady's store in order to begin her full body transformation. But she doesn't realize that she's about to change her life for the worst. She takes off her clothes and lies down on this table and is about to be put to sleep. Blonde Lady says that when she wakes up, she'll be dozens of times prettier than her old self. She goes to sleep, and this mad doctor begins cutting away and adding newer flesh to her. Her body. Hours later, Yeji's mom returns to their apartment when she sees Yeji's full transformation. And it's shocking. Yeji is transformed into a full-on baddie. The mother is stunned as Yeji thanks her mother for everything. But this is only the beginning. Suddenly, Yeji demands to borrow another $5,000 in order to buy sexier clothes for her new self. The mother doesn't know what to say, but gives in and gives Yeji her credit card. Walking outside of her apartment, Yeji discovers for the first time what it's like to be pretty. Everyone looks at her, and her life has finally gotten better. She goes shopping, and the last of her old pathetic self disappears. Everyone around her then begins taking pictures of her, wanting to hang out with her, and she begins to trend on social media. Now she's an attractive, stylish woman, and Yeji starts to get asked on dozens and dozens of dates, from fancy doctors to CEOs, and they all beg for her attention. And this one dude invites her onto a boat party later tonight. Yeji now realizes that she she has not only the looks of a hot girl, but she has all the powers of one too. Okay, this is local, because now we are getting a first-hand experience of what it's like to be in the shoes of a full-on hot girl. And make no mistake, these types of people really do truly have a superpower, which is their pretty privilege, which is the association of beauty with talent, intelligence, social success, and health. Pretty people are granted more opportunities and get away with doing a lot more stuff on average. In this article by Q Ovs Studio, they break down the six social privileges that make up the framework of what pretty privilege really means. First, there's lookism, which is discrimination based on your looks, norm violations, which is when an attractive person does something naughty and socially unacceptable, they then get a pass, such as being mean to a guy or a girl. Next is the halo effect, which is when an attractive person is also assumed to have all the other attractive qualities, such as being smart. The beauty premium, which is when it is assumed that a more attractive person earns more and or gets more opportunities to be paid more due to their looks. And finally, there is quality of life, which is the belief that attractive people are generally treated much better, have better mental health, and live longer on average. These are just a few of the examples of the powers that we now have as a hot girl. And Yeji here is utilizing her newfound looks in the greatest way possible almost. This beauty water isn't cheap, and we can assume that if this type of product is circulating within celebrity circles, then this product is probably not a one-time buy. Which means we need more cash. Yeji is doing good when it comes to taking out all of these dudes out on dates to impress her. But I would take it a step further. I would use one of these male suckers to be my sugar daddy and start lending me cold hard Korean cash. And this is exactly what Yeji should do. Later, Yeji goes to the boat party she was invited to and enjoys the high life surrounded by dozens of beautiful people. Yeji kicks back and relaxes. Just then, she notices her former enemy and boss, Redhead Lady standing across from her in the VIP section. Yeji hides her face, but then realizes that no one would recognize her old self anyways. Now jealous, Yeji tries to head into the VIP section, but this CEO simp says that she's not allowed in there and tells her to settle for the life that he's given her. But she isn't settling for shit. Storming off, Yeji is about to leave when this guy catches up to her. It's Mr. Manager. Not recognizing Yeji's new identity, he hands her his business card, telling her that he's the man responsible for turning this red-headed harpy of a lady into a big star, and that he could do the same for Yeji too. She takes the card and leaves. Later that night, Yeji feels her stomach and realizes that she's put on some weight. Horrified at becoming her old self again, she prepares her bathtub with one thing she thinks will solve all her problems. Beauty water. Her mother begins getting nervous and asks Yeji to exercise instead of using this mysterious water that they still don't know anything about. But Yeji tells her to pipe down. She lays down in the tub and 
She waits for the beauty water to work its magic, setting the alarm for 30 minutes as she drifts off to sleep. But that was her biggest mistake. Without her realizing it, her phone had run out of battery, causing her to stay inside the beauty water for longer than 30 minutes. Later, she wakes up and thinks that everything has gone back to normal. Her life is now about to get a whole lot worse. Suddenly, she stands up and sees the flesh melt from her body, calling out to her parents. They try and help her, but they are too horrified at what they're seeing. Their little baby girl is dying before their very eyes. Freaking the hell out, Yeji's mother remembers what Yeji told her about this potion. And both parents decide to give Yeji some of their own human flesh to try and save her. Waking up later, Yeji is confused and walks to the mirror, only to see a horrible monster staring right back at her. She screams for her life and her mother says that they tried to give her body as much flesh as they could without dying. But Yeji gets angry and ungrateful and demands that she needs more flesh in order to go back to being beautiful. Desperate and out of options, she heads back to the beauty water store. She asks the same blonde lady to help her out. But this time the lady says that she needs to pay another 200,000 first before the procedure can be done. Out of money and options, Yeji begs her with her life and even stoops so low as to kiss the blonde lady's foot, begging her to help her out. And finally, Yeji convinces the blonde lady to perform the operation. Blonde lady has no idea the monster that she's about to create. Later, Yeji wakes up again on the operating table and finds that her face has become beautiful again. She thanks blonde lady for everything and says that her life is now back to being perfect. But suddenly she realizes something. Her body is still hideous. And blonde lady then tells her that she'll need to cough up the full amount if she wants to fully transform again. Yeji then says that she'll go find more flesh for blonde lady to use on her. But blonde lady laughs and tells Yeji that she's no killer. She calls Yeji a pig and tells her to get out. But Yeji has become the one thing that she would never thought she'd be. A full on beauty psycho junkie. She suddenly attacks blonde lady, biting her flesh and mashing her face in until she finally dies in front of our eyes. Well, yeah, she's a junkie now. What did you expect? There's a reason that this beauty water doctor operated in the shady way that she did and her mysterious practice and the lack of red tape has now costed her her life. But what is impractical and kind of stupid is why Yeji decided to kill the only person that knew how to do this beauty water procedure. I mean, if you're going to kill her, make sure you line someone else up before you kill them. It's noted that before, Yeji noticed some weight gain around her stomach earlier. This means that despite the beauty water procedure, her body began regressing to its old ways within a couple of weeks since she had the procedure done. From the moment she noticed her actual weight gain, she probably gained at least 4 to 8 pounds or 1 to 2 kilograms, if not more during this time. Now it's not clear if her body is going back to her old ways because of a lack of a healthy lifestyle or simply deterioration of the procedure. But regardless, this means that all the beauty water procedures likely last less than a month before needing to re-up. And this means that Yeji should have taken a moment to think before she killed this doctor. She should have carefully considered the fact that blonde lady was the only one who knew how to do the procedure and most importantly knew how to kill someone in order to harvest their flesh. Aside from using blonde lady's flesh here, we have another month max before the beauty water treatment starts to fade. Which means we'll need to muster up the courage and kill someone else before that happens. Yeji acting out of emotion and not methodical calculation has royally screwed up her life so bad it's delicious. And now has kind of put her in a situation that she doesn't need to be in. Also, Yeji's high emotions means that she failed to consider her greatest advantage that she had in this new hideous body of hers. And that is the fact is completely different to her beauty water persona. If bringing a fresh corpse was the only thing that blonde lady needed to help Yeji transform back to her old self, that and $200,000, then she could have used her ugly identity as a cover up and go and murder a few people. Being that beauty water would have essentially erased this identity and given her back her old beautiful self. She is basically the perfect assassin, the perfect murderer. She could have gone away with anything and no one would have noticed. That's when she hears on the news the recent disappearances of many 20 year olds around Seoul. She calls her mom to tell her that blonde lady has fixed her and that everything is all right. But Yeji has no idea what horrors she's about to find herself in. Later, as the months go by, Yeji rises to the top of stardom and becomes a full-on Korean celebrity. She takes
takes a break in between filming when she runs into her manager and asks him to drive her home. In the car, she asks him where Redhead Lady has gone, since it seems like she's disappeared from the face of the earth. But Mr. Manager says that he doesn't know where she's gone, only that she costed him dozens of interviews and film roles that he got for her. He showed her Red Lady's social media page and tells her that despite disappearing, she still posts pictures of herself regularly online. Little do they know, the truth behind her disappearance is way more terrifying than they could ever imagine. Mr. Manager then tells her that he suspects that she's doing films overseas thanks to a powerful connection that she knew, and tells Yeji that there is a CEO behind the scenes that is interested in making Yeji a world star. But his creepiness causes Yeji to escape from his car. Later, Yeji stops by a convenience store near her apartment and feels grateful that her life is now finally back to normal. Just as she bumps into Pretty Boy, he asks if she's alright, but Yeji is too embarrassed and quickly leaves the store. But Pretty Boy is too much of a stud muffin, so Yeji follows him to a fitness club nearby. She sees him working out and decides to join the club in hopes of catching him there. A couple of days later, she heads to the fitness club and that's when she sees him, excited and determined. She goes up and asks if they can talk, and she mentions that he was kind to her once, but doesn't get too specific. He laughs and says that he can't remember her at all, but notices her beautiful eyes again. He then asks Yeji out on a date and later. Yeji asks if Pretty Boy happens to know what happened to Redhead Lady, and he mentions that a powerful and horrifying CEO thought she was acting out of line and caused her to quit. He also says this is also the reason that he left show business and tells Yeji to be careful in this industry. They then get all lovey-dovey and begin meeting up again and again, ever exchanging super cute messages. But suddenly one day at work, she sees her face suddenly start to melt again and she begins to freak out. She runs back home and tries to take another beauty water bath before her date with Pretty Boy. And she asks her parents for more of their flesh. She tells them that she's becoming ugly again and they have no idea what the heck she's talking about. <laughs> okay, she's crazy, she's crazy, she's really, really nuts. This whole thing makes it official. Yeji here is certifiably batshit crazy and the fact that she has no gratitude at all for everything her parents have literally given up for her makes her a despicable human being. I do love it though. Now, it seems as though Yeji right now has a serious case of body dysmorphic disorder, which is a mental health condition where a person spends a lot of time worrying about their flaws and their appearance. If I was Yeji's daddy, I'd put her in the corner for a long time out and also a mental hospital because she is so out of line. Yeji never once asked about the ingredients that were in beauty water, which means that it's very possible that the ingredients inside this cosmetic product could likely be interfering with her thought patterns. According to the environmentalworkinggroup.com, no category of consumer products is subjected to less government oversight than cosmetics and other personal care products. In fact, a California assembly bill has proposed that many certain chemicals used in cosmetics should be banned from use due to the fact that some of these chemicals can present long-term health risks when consumed in high enough quantities. And one of these chemicals on this list is methylene glycol, a type of ingredient used in some hair strengthening products. And while this chemical may be on the government's watch list, this chemical is produced via the reaction of another type of chemical known as ethylene glycol. But this chemical specifically is not on the government's watch list and is another chemical that is used in many skincare products and is lethal in high enough quantities. Some of the side effects of this chemical are dizziness, unconsciousness, and confusion. Exactly what Yeji is experiencing since she is clearly confused about her appearance and has experienced all types of side effect symptoms ever since she started taking beauty water. This highly deadly chemical and also apparently highly addictive. If I was Yeji's daddy, I'd get a gun and shoot her in the head and put her out of her misery and our misery because I've literally given up muscle mass for her. Plus she's really starting to piss me off. Coming to her senses and realizing that she still looks beautiful, Yeji rushes to go meet Pretty Boy. She makes up some excuse for being very late and he then forgives her. They go for a romantic walk and get all cutesy classic anime style when Pretty Boy takes out a big girthy rock of a wedding ring and he asks Yeji to marry him on the spot. Yeji is shocked but says yes. The two celebrate and Pretty Boy then says that she should come over to his place to try his special dessert that he plans to make specifically for Yeji. Having the best time of her life, Yeji accepts to go over to Pretty Boy's apartment. And that was her biggest mistake. They head over to his apartment, but inside, Yeji notices strange paintings on the wall, along with a family picture on the table. She looks at the photo and notices the pretty family, except for one girl, who Pretty Boy says was the smartest of the family, but was always ugly and always misunderstood. She also asks why Pretty Boy isn't in the picture, but he says that the photo was taken before he was born, saying there was a pretty big age gap between him and his older 
older sisters. He then tells her that she'll meet the less prettier sister soon. But Yeji has no idea about what horrifying things that he is about to show her. Pretty Boy then begins making the dessert as Yeji cuddles him, but she suddenly hears someone yell in the distance. Pretty Boy says it's nothing and tells her to wait in the living room, but Yeji suspects that Pretty Boy is starting to have some real glasses guy energy about him. On the way to the living room, Yeji notices an open door into the bedroom, and she goes inside there. And there she notices a box and begins to open it up when she discovers bottles of beauty water, along with many IDs of young pretty girls, the same girls that the news mentioned had disappeared earlier, along with the ID of Redhead Lady. And she realizes that Pretty Boy is the killer. Okay, this confirms my theory that all pretty people are major turd blossoms on the inside. And this also confirms my theory that Pretty Boy from the beginning had some real glasses guy energy about him. You know what I'm talking about. And this means that we're absolutely screwed. But in this case, we need to be extremely careful about our next few steps. It's likely no coincidence that Pretty Boy is going to kill us. And him having all of those ID means that he's killed before and is extremely experienced at what he does. This makes our enemy methodical, calculative, cunning, and more batshit crazy than us, which is saying something. But we have to remember our hot girl training. And this means that we need to seduce the shit out of Pretty Boy using our feminine wiles. If I was Yeji, I would collect my thoughts and go back to the dining room, sit down and tell Pretty Boy that I have a huge case of IBS and that I'm about to explode the back end of myself. But as I tell him this, I would say that I heard a suspicious sound coming from the bathroom or the room farthest away from us. My excuse of IBS will cause him to be thrown off and feel as though he's under crunch time before I shit my pants. This will cause him to not think too hard about our excuse and do as he's told. Then once gone, I would grab the closest kitchen knife and perch myself from behind the wall with my head peeked out from the corner. I would wait until Pretty Boy returns from checking out the sound. And that's when I would chef the shit out of him and slice him up. The cops would not likely pin it on us since we'd have an abundance of evidence pinning all the sadistic crimes on Pretty Boy. And also, <sighs> Yeji should have known that being a hot girl would come with some hot problems to deal with. Yeji is horrified, but calmly heads back to the dining room and acts as if nothing is wrong. But Pretty Boy thinks she's acting suspicious as hell. He tries to make her taste his sweet dessert, but she suddenly makes an excuse and heads to the bathroom. She tries to open the front door, but it's locked, and Pretty Boy shows up behind her and tells her that the bathroom is to the left, and Yeji quickly runs inside. Her heart pounds as she locks the bathroom door behind her, but that's when she gets horrified to see all the victims of Pretty Boy, and even sees pictures of her old self on the wall. He was watching her all along. Yeji is stunned and finds Pretty Boy right behind her, and tries to stab her with this needle, but Yeji bites his hand and runs to the front door. She tries to open it, but then is suddenly knocked unconscious. She later wakes up naked and tied up, and Pretty Boy reveals that he was actually the ugly smart girl in the family photo. He realized growing up that no matter how much talent someone had, all people needed or cared about was beauty, and that's why he changed into a guy with beauty bar, and has since then been obsessed with collecting beauty. He also revealed that it was him in disguise as Redhead Lady, and was the one who had been posting her pictures to her social media. He then drops his robe and reveals all the beauty he has collected from all the girls, telling Yeji that he's been obsessed with her eyes since they first met, and takes out this sharp knife, causing her to scream in pain. Later, we see Mr. Manager sending Pretty Boy more pics of a new soon-to-be victim, revealing him to be the mysterious CEO behind the scenes, and he declares that this girl's new lips are the prettiest he's ever seen. He then looks down fondly at Yeji's eyes on his thigh, and tells her that soon she'll have the most beautiful mouth in the world, and that she'll be with him forever, and he gets ready to repeat his kill cycle all over again. Man, if you don't want no pretty boy to steal your sexiness, then like, comment, let us know what you liked, and of course, didn't like it, don't forget to check out the Hollywood playlist down below.